Lesson 5.6 is exponential and logarithmic equations. We've talked about solving some exponential equations before where we tried to get the same base on either side, just one number raised to a power equal to the same number raised to a power, and we can set the exponents equal to each other. Now we're going to talk about how to solve exponential equations that can't be solved that way, as well as some logarithmic equations. One thing to keep in mind when solving logarithmic equations is that logarithms have a restricted domain. Whatever is inside the logarithm must be greater than zero. So when we solve logarithmic equations, we have to keep that in mind, similar to square root equations, because you would end up with a possibility of extraneous solutions. So looking at this first equation, we have 2 log base 5 of x is equal to log base 5 of 9. So we're going to start with the same idea of our exponential equations, where if we have 2 of the same base on either side, we can set the exponents equal to each other. Well, same idea here, if we have two logarithms on either side of the equation with the same base, and just log base of something equals log same base of something, the insides must be equal to each other. So I'm going to use my rules of logarithms in order to make that situation happen. So I use the rule that if I have a number in front, that can be an exponent inside of the logarithm. So I have log base 5 of x squared is equal to log base 5 of 9. So just like our exponential ones, I have a base and a base equal to each other. Since the same thing is being done to both x squared and 9 and they're equal to each other, then they must be equal to each other. So that means that x squared has to equal 9, and so if I take the square root of both sides, I get plus or minus 3. But because of our domain issue here, we do need to check these. And the way that we check is we plug them into the very, very original equation. Any logarithm that we have, we plug them in for x and make sure that whatever you get is strictly greater than 0. So if I check the first one, if I plug in 3 for x, I get just log base 5 of 3. And so the inside of my logarithm is 3, which is greater than 0, so it's fine. The next one, I'm going to plug in negative 3 for x. I get log base 5 of negative 3, so the inside of my logarithm is negative 3, which is not greater than 0. So that is not a possible solution. It's an extraneous solution. So my only answer is x equals 3. For this next one, we have log base 5 of x plus 6 plus log base 5 of x plus 2 is equal to 1. I notice there is not a logarithm on the right side, so there's two ways that you can do it. Once you've combined into one logarithm on the left, you can use the inverse form, exponential form, to help you, or you can convert the right side into a logarithm and do what we did here where we set the insides equal to each other. So I combined log base 5 of x plus 6 and log base 5 of x plus 2 using the property that if I add two logarithms with the same base, I can multiply inside. So it becomes log base 5 of x plus 6 times x plus 2 is equal to 1. And then I chose to switch into the inverse form, into exponential form. So base stays the same, input and output switch. So I get 5, base 5 to the first power, and then I multiplied this out and got x squared plus 8x plus 12. So now I have a quadratic. I just subtracted 5 from both sides to get this side equal to 0. And it factors into x plus 7 times x plus 1, which means x can be either negative 7 or negative 1. And then when I check my solution, I need to plug it into both of these logarithms. For the first one, I get negative 7 plus 6, which is negative 1 inside, which does not work. So I don't even need to check the second one. I know negative 7 is not going to work. For negative 1, I get negative 1 plus 6, which is 5, which is greater than 0, so that's fine. And then I get negative 1 plus 2, which is 1, which is also greater than 0, so that does work. So on this one, I ended up with a negative 1. We have a couple more equations here, so solve these logarithmic equations using properties of logarithms and possibly inverses to help solve. For this first one, I made it so that I had the same base logarithm on both sides, in this case a natural log. So I use the property that I'm adding two logarithms with the same base, so I'm going to multiply inside. So on the left, I get natural log of x times x minus 4. And on the right, I didn't do anything. So now if I'm taking the natural log of two different things and they're equal to each other, that means the two things must be equal to each other. I distributed the x in here. I got x squared minus 4x is equal to x plus 6. I moved everything over so that one side was equal to 0, factored into x minus 6 times x plus 1 equals 0, which means x is e either 6 or negative 1. I had to check 6 in all three of them. In all three cases, it worked. And then negative 1, as soon as I plugged it into the first one, it did not work. So negative 1 is not a solution. x only equals 6. 
For the next one, I combined the first two logarithms because I'm subtracting two logarithms of the same base. I can divide inside of the logarithm. And then since the right side didn't have a logarithm in it, I switched forms into exponential form. Base stays the same, input and output switch, so I get 4 cubed is equal to x squared minus 9 over x plus 3. 4 cubed is 64, and then I cleared my denominator and solved these, this quadratic. I get x equals 67 and x equals negative 3. When I checked my solution, 67 worked, but negative 3 did not because it makes the inside equal 0, and so x only equals 67. So in general, when you're solving logarithmic equations, try and get one logarithm on both sides. If there's logarithms on both sides, if there's logarithms on both sides, make sure the bases are the same, then you can set the insides equal to each other. If there's logarithm only on one side, get one logarithm equal to a number, and then switch forms into exponential form to help you solve. Now we have an exponential equation, 0 0.3 to the 1 plus x equals 1.7 to the 2x plus 1. Previously, when we solved these, we wanted to get the same base on either side, and then we could set the exponents equal to each other. If that didn't work, then we tried to get exponent on one side equal to a number without an exponent, and then uh, switch it into logarithmic form, use the inverse to help solve. That is one way that you could do this. Um, you could pick one of the two bases and switch it into logarithmic form. I'm going to do it slightly different. Instead, I'm going to take the log or the natural log, you can pick whatever base you want, of both sides and use my log properties to help me solve this. So now that I have natural log both sides, I have an exponent inside of my logarithm. So on both sides, I can bring that exponent down in front. Natural log of a number is just a number. So just like if this was a 3 instead of a natural log of 3, I can distribute this number into the parentheses on both of these. Now, keeping in mind that natural log of a number is just a number, I have a number plus x times a number is equal to 2 times a number times x plus another number. So just like if this was not natural logs, I'm going to move everything with an x to one side and everything without an x to the other side. There's nothing that I can combine um, because they're not like terms. On the right, you could change this into division inside. I'm not going to worry about it. I'm just going to leave it as the natural log of 1.7 minus the natural log of 0.3. On the left, I'm trying to get a number times x so that I can divide away whatever's being multiplied by x. And I notice that both of these terms have an x in it, so I'm going to factor that x out. So now on the left, I factor that x out, and I have the natural log of 0.3 minus 2 times the natural log of 1.7. This whole thing is just a number. It's not the prettiest number in the world, but it's just a number. So I have a number times x. I'm going to divide both sides by that number. I divided both sides by that whole thing, and so I ended up with x to be the natural log of 1.7 minus the natural log of 0.3 over the natural log of 0.3 minus 2 times the natural log of 1.7. You could simplify the numerator and the denominator a little with logarithmic properties. In the end, it doesn't do a whole lot for you, but if it looks cleaner to you, you can. I'm just going to leave my answer like that. So when you have exponent on both sides and you can't make one of the bases be the other base, there's no way to get the same base, one alternative is to log or natural log or whatever base you want to use both sides and then use your log properties to solve. Just don't forget that a log or a natural log of a number is just a number and you can treat it that way. On this one we have e to the x minus 5 times e to the negative x over 2 equals negative 2. So there's not really going to be a way that I can get one exponent equal to one exponent. So we want to manipulate this a little bit and see if there's another way that I can solve this. So first thing I did is I multiplied both sides by 2 to get that 2 out of the denominator, and I made this e to the negative x be 5 over e to the x. So I got e to the x minus 5 over e to the x equals negative 4. And then I multiplied both sides by e to the x to clear out that e to the x in the denominator. So I ended up with e to the x quantity squared minus 5 equals negative 4 e to the x. Now this looks a little bit like something I already know how to solve. I have something squared, I have a linear version of that something, and I have a constant. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to let some random letter that's not x, I'm going to call it a, be equivalent to e to the x. So I'm going to replace my e to the x with a. So I end up with a squared minus 5 equals negative 4 times a. This 
is now something I know how to solve. So I'm going to go ahead and solve this for a. So I set one side equal to 0, and then I factored. I got a squared plus 4a minus 5 is equal to 0, so a times 5 times a minus 1 is equal to 0. So a equals negative 5 and a equals 1. So just a simple quadratic that I solved, but I'm not solving for a. I'm solving for x, so I'm going to replace my a's back with my e to the x's. So I end up with e to the x equals negative 5 and e to the x is equal to 1. Well, I can never raise a positive number to a power and ever get a negative number, so this one is not going to give me any solution at all. And then what do I have to raise anything to get 1? Well, x can be 0. So on this problem, what I'm doing is I'm making it look like something I already know how to solve. There's no way, like the previous ones, where I can get the same base on either side and set the x ones equal to each other. Even like the previous one, I can't isolate one exponent on either side. There's too many e to the x's. I can't switch into logarithmic form. So I have to find something else. So once I've cleared all the denominators out and everything, I notice it looks somewhat like a quadratic. So that's exactly how I'm going to treat it. I'm going to treat it exactly like a quadratic. The only thing you have to be careful of is if you do replace your exponent here with another letter. One, don't use the letter that you're actually solving for. But two, make sure at the end you substitute back for the original so you can actually solve what you're trying to solve for. Use a similar idea to help you solve for x in 3 to the 2x plus 3 to the x is equal to 2. So on this one, I have 3 to the 2x. Well, I'm multiplying two exponents here. I know that's the same thing as raising a power to a power. So I rewrote this as 3 to the x quantity squared plus 3 to the x is equal to 2. Now, this looks like my quadratic. If it helps you to replace 3 to the x with another variable, then please feel free to do that. I didn't. I just factored this the, same, the way it actually was. So I moved the 2 over, and then I factored this thing because I have something squared plus a linear term, plus a constant term. So I just factored this. It need to multiply together to be negative 2 and add up to be a positive 1 because this is really an invisible 1 times 3 to the x in front of here. So then I get 3 to the x plus 2 times 3 to the x minus 1 is equal to 0, which means 3 to the x equals negative 2 and 3 to the x equals 1. 3 to the x can never equal negative 2. There's no solution. And this one, just like the previous, x equals 0. That won't always happen, it just happened to be with the two examples that I chose. It could be 3 to the x equals 3, in which case x would equal 1. If you ended up with something that was not a nice multiple, so for example, if this was a positive 2 instead, so like 3 to the x is equal to a positive 2, there's not a nice number that I can raise 3 to to get 2. So in that case, I would just switch this into logarithmic form and I would say that x was equal to log base 3 of 2 if you end up with something that's not a nice multiple of the original base. This section is a little bit difficult because it's not like, here's one type of problem and just solve them. There's a lot of different ways that you can set up logarithmic and exponential equations, and you kind of just have to work on how am I going to attack this specific problem? What does it look like? What kind of style does it fit? And then how can I attack it from there? And how can I use my logarithmic and exponential properties to help me? Keep in mind that logarithmic equations have domain issues, so you do need to check your solutions. Exponential functions do not have domain issues, so that's why we didn't have to check our solutions for exponential equations, as long as there isn't a context to follow.